Let's get across the market open now. Mark Gardner joining us from MPC Markets. Uh, Mark, happy Friday to you. Happy uh, Turkey Day. <laughs> Turkey Day indeed. Well, yeah, US markets closed for Thanksgiving, so it was pretty subdued overnight. Yeah, it's when the, uh, the junior European analyst on the desk gets to really shine yeah. right in the morning report um, and then pretty much goes back into their box for about the other 364 days. But um, no, obviously nothing happened overnight overall. Um, and I would imagine, um, you're, you know, Trump, Trump's got his sound bites out there with the tariffs and things for everyone to discuss over the Thanksgiving table in the US. Um, but yeah, it's, it's a really subdued period of the market, even more so um, than Christmas, I think. So uh, remember back to my trading days, Christmas was much, much more um, thick with volume and, uh, and, and better trading than, than Thanksgiving. So it's a, it's a pretty big holiday over there. And obviously we'll be watching those Black Friday um, numbers come in uh, as they go shopping tomorrow. And um, you know, that whilst they're anecdotal, that we might see some reactions maybe in the consumer discretionary here. Just walking through Pitt Street, everyone's got a Black Friday sale. Uh, so, um, so yeah, we'll see if the Australians get their wallets out um, over the next couple of days. Now, seasonally, uh, December, one of the best months. Yes. And, you know, we talk inevitably about the, the Santa Claus rally. Do you, mm. do you think that's in place at the moment, given we are at pretty much record highs at the moment? Um, seasonality hasn't had much weight this year. I think it's, um, I think it's possibly the bit, nearly well, about half the months this year have gone completely converse to what they, uh, what they normally would. Obviously, September, October was up. Um, election year in the US, that, that seasonality is generally always more pronounced and it, was, and it obviously went the other way. Um, and this sort of, you know, this melt up after the Trump announcements, which... I think if people actually stop and think about, you know, what he's doing, particularly with tariffs, etc., um, you know, that's that's inflationary, and and it has been, you know, is a, you know, a whole phone book of uh, economic studies that show that it's inflationary in the short term, and the Fed's really trying to get ahead of that. And obviously, they had PCE data this week that was, you know, mildly higher than what they wanted, um, and. And they've had strong GDP data as well. So, I mean, those, those rate cuts that everyone's screaming for at the moment isn't really, and it's the same here in Australia. Consumers keep spending, their loans in arrears aren't anywhere near as bad. Um, you know, and, and I think there was some pundits this week saying Australia might miss the rate cut cycle altogether and increasingly looking like it might be the case. So um, if, we, if we manage to get this soft landing here, I mean, we may not see another cut from the US even. And I, I certainly don't think they should be one in December, uh, particularly given the, um, you know, the economic growth numbers um, and, that, and that potential from Ju- uh, January 20 onwards for um, significant tariffs to go on to Mexico, Canada and China. And that's electronics and mainly a lot of motor vehicles and machinery and things. So, um, so yeah, but we're sort of looking into next year and um, yeah, we've got a couple of sort of AI picks, uh, one, one which will benefit... Um, Quite nice, it would be John Deere, but both from the tariffs standpoint, because the 75% of their manufacturing is still in the US. Um, they have small operations, but the AI technology being rolled out, the GPS mapping, they're doing deals with Starlink, obviously, because a lot of farms are in remote areas. So, so this is what, like, headers being driven without people buying uh, they're, they're, it's not just It's not just one or two things. Um, there, are, you know, there is a multiple range. You, you've even got setups where one, one man can send four unmanned tractors out and they sit in an office like we're sitting right now and they're mm. controlling them. So that reduces their labour costs. Um, and obviously as well, they're, they're using the facial recognition technology from your phone essentially and then some laser scanning for weed identification. And it's reducing, um, you know, it's reducing farmers' uh, costs for sprays, herbicides, pesticides uh, by anywhere up to 80% in some cases, um, which is quite significant, obviously. And, um, and, you know, obviously those unmanned vehicles and being able to have a, a little bit of economies of scale, um, you know, means that these massive operations can be run by quite, a, you, know, um, you know, quite few people, realistically. Mm. Um, some of the GPS mapping is quite impressive where... As they crop, they'll analyse. They'll analyse. So for next year, they know where um, they need to put nutrients and what nutrients, etc. So, whilst it seems like tractors, they're uh, you know they they actually are one of those companies that's actually monetising AI pretty quickly. Um, and the other one's Intuitive Surgical, which um, one of the uh, one of the better charts I've seen in quite a while. Um, and essentially, this is robotic surgery and. 
I think they did around about 2.2 million surgeries last year. It's only really in its early stages um, and, it, and for, certain, um, for certain procedures. But um, the, the capacity for this to expand, they're, less, they're around about a half a percent of total surgeries at the moment. So even to get to 1%, they're going to double. Um, mm. And, you know, and, I, and I hear that these uh, are even getting rolled out here in Australia as well. Um, and as they add surgeries uh, as, and, and it's checked off, I would imagine from a liability point of view from the hospitals as well, um, it's great for insurance. Like it on the robots, uh, the, yeah. uh, the steady hand of the surgeon no longer required. Yeah, well, I mean, the surgeons are still operate. Uh, they're still operating those those. But yeah, the, the steady hands no longer, uh, yeah, no no longer an absolute necessity. Uh, so to today's session, Mark, what, what are you expecting? Uh, we've got a um, couple of earnings releases. Also, AGM's continuing as well. Yeah, Paladin's got its AGM, I believe, um, and we, you know, obviously it's been hit pretty significantly recently. Um, I think it's a really good buying opportunity down here as it stands at the moment. We're, they've gone into production this year. They're, you know, obviously they're generating revenue and here we are a good 20% lower than um, where we were this time last year. But, they, um, but they've had those production issues from the Langer Heinrich mine, haven't they? Yeah, and so did Cameco this year and it's back at record highs. Yeah. So it's one of those things that, you know, in the long term, this is a knee-jerk reaction. and. Um, you know, we're going to need to power all this AI. Um, we're going to, so, and that's really going to be one of the only options, to be honest. Um, I don't think data centres are, uh, you know, particularly like uh, intermittent electricity provided from renewables. And, um, and the amount of power that they're sucking from the grid means that they're going to have to come up with their own solutions to power those things. So small modular reactor technology next year, I think, I think there'll be some movements forward in that. And that'll be a really interesting space to watch. But it's all going to need uranium. So I think, um, I think overall, you can buy that very safely um, as a long term buy and hold. Um, and you'll be particularly at these levels, you'll be OK. I mean, this thing was at nearly $18 at one stage this year. so. Mm. It, um, you know, which was a little bit frothy, but uh, I can see it, it certainly going back there at some stage next year. And Mark, on the weekend, we've got some uh, Chinese data to watch out for. Yeah, per, um, manufacturing PMI and services PMI, both expected around 50.2. So 50 is neutral, obviously anything above that's expansionary. Um, you know, I don't know how much that will, how much that will necessarily be watched um, just due to the fact that, you know, the stimulus is probably hasn't made its way into the system as yet. Um, and the way that they're targeting the stimulus is more towards obviously the consumer. So it, there will be a lag from demand uh, from the consumer as well. So, but a horrible number won't be good for our market on Monday. Um, a really positive number, um, you might start to see that, that, you know, that resources and material sector at the moment um, really undervalued compared to the rest of the market. And, uh, and I'll, you know, as it stands, China will end up stimulating more if, they, if they're lagging. I think we've probably seen the worst of it. So I think the likes of your, your big miners here at the moment are a very good buying opportunity, you know, on a one to five year basis.